It's time for My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball. Hello, everybody. Yes, it's the Gay Family Series, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning, transcribed and brought to you by the Jell-O family of Red Letter Dessert. And now Lucille Ball with Richard Denning as Liz and George Cooper. Two people who live together and like it. As we look in on the Coopers, it's morning. George is at breakfast while Liz is out in the kitchen talking to Katie, the maid. Katie, you've been with us for ten years now, and I think it's high time I told you how much I appreciate you. Well, thank you, Mrs. Cooper. Really, Katie, you've been loyal, faithful, trustworthy, and the most efficient cook and housekeeper in town. Thank you, Mrs. Cooper. How much do you want to borrow? (laughs) Why, Katie... Just because I compliment you, it doesn't mean I want to borrow money. Oh, I'm sorry. That remark was suspicious, uncalled for. And all I wanted was (laughs) $14.95. Will you lend it to me? Mrs. Cooper, I only have one source of income. You. Ooh. (laughs) I just don't know what to do, Katie. You know that little cuckoo clock I bought George for Christmas? Yes. Well, I paid the jeweler by check. Only I didn't have enough money in my account, so he let me post-date the check ahead to January 13th. And that's today. And you know what? What? It would be just like that dirty stinker to try and cash it. (laughs) Oh, dear. Well, just let him cash it and see how far he gets. It'll serve him right. But, Mrs. Cooper, if the check bounces, won't Mr. Cooper find out about it? Katie, you don't think I forgot that George works in the bank, do you? I've got it all fixed so he'll never find out. Well, how did you do that? I wrote the check on another bank. (laughs) But you don't have any money in another bank. What's the difference? I don't have any money in George's bank either. (laughs) But can't they put you in jail for writing a check where you don't have an account? Sure, but after all, what's... Ah! They can put me in jail. I didn't think of that. Liz, come on in to breakfast. I'll be right there, honey. Oh, I wonder if George can be smooched into a... Lending mood. Oh, has my big, wonderful, handsome husband been lonely for his loving little baby girl, huh? What are you after, Liz? (laughs) Well, I'm batting zero today. (laughs) I'm not after anything. Really? Yes, really. So happens I was just thinking about how much I love you. And I was just going to tell you about it. Well, now I won't. Oh, go ahead. No. Please? Well, George, we've been married for ten years now. And I just want you to know that you've been loyal, faithful, trustworthy, and the most efficient cook and housekeeper in the whole... (laughs) Oh, no, no. What? uh, uh, You've been (laughs) devoted, affectionate, and the best husband in the whole world. (laughs) Give me a great big kiss. Mm. (laughs) Oh, Liz. I'm glad I married you. That kiss was worth a million dollars. Really? A million dollars? Absolutely. Uh, how much was it worth in cash? (laughs) Cash? Yeah, how much? A hundred thousand? A thousand? Fourteen dollars and ninety-five cents? Liz, do you need money again? Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but now that you've wheedled my secret from me, I... Do you by any chance remember our New Year's resolutions? Yes. What were they? You agreed to forfeit $25 every time you borrowed money from me. And I agreed to forfeit $25 every time I dropped cigar ashes on the rug. (laughs) I'd say you had that hindsight, too. Here, you've already broken your resolution, and it's only January the 13th. Yeah, that's the best I've done in ten years. Oh, Liz. Anyway, I haven't broken it. I didn't ask you to lend me any money. Oh, that's true. You wouldn't want to give me some, would you? (laughs) No. 
Well, all right, then. George Cooper, will you lend me $15? You're sure that's what you want? Yes. It'll cost you $25 forfeit. I don't care. I have to have the money. Now, remember, if you start to borrow, you'll just get in deeper and deeper. Look, Dale Carnegie, I need the money. <laughs> so lend me $15 and I'll owe it to you. Oh, no, no, you forgot the forfeit. If I give you the 15 you'll owe me 40 Oh, getting deeper already, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, okay, it's a deal. Okay. Well, where's the money? Money? Yes, you owe me $15. Well, you owe me 40 Well, but... I'll tell you what. <laughs> we'll we'll just take the fifteen off the forty, and you only owe me twenty-five. Well, that's better. <laughs> hey, wait a minute! I didn't lay my hands on any loot. <laughs> Would you like to borrow another fifteen dollars? No, thanks. I can't afford it. <laughs> Never mind, George Cooper. I don't need you to get money from. I have friends. Hello, Mrs. Cooper. Oh, hello, Marie. They told me Mrs. Atterbury was here at your beauty parlor. Oh, yeah. Uh, she's in seven, I think. Uh, by the way, Mrs. Cooper, do you want to touch up? You're showing your true colors. <laughs> oh, you mean my part? Part? It looks like a fire break. <laughs> Marie, I, I can't afford a touch-up till, well, a couple of weeks. You won't need it then. You'll be a brunette. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's see how I make out with Mrs. Atterbury. Where is she? Well, let's try number seven. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there she is under that mud pack. How can you tell? I wrote her name across the forehead. <laughs> oh, Iris, you've got to do me a favor. Oh, hi, don't talk to you. No, no, you know. She can't answer you. That mud pack dries pretty hard. <laughs> Wouldn't a husband like to get her in this condition? <laughs> that ain't funny. Iris, Iris, listen to me. You have to lend me some money. Ooh, what? <laughs> so now look what you've done. You cracked the mud pack. Oh, you'll pay for this, girl. What a terrible thing for you to say. What did I say? You wanted me to lend you money. Well? I was just getting ready to come over and borrow some from you. Oh, you mean we're both broke? Stony. <laughs> Rudolph started off the new year with an economy wave. So did George. I guess it's in the air. Darn those Russians anyway. <laughs> Liz, what do you need money so badly for? Well, you know that little cuckoo clock in George's office? Clean your head back, Mrs. Atterbury. I'll pluck your eyebrows. Oh, okay. Oh! Gently, Marie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Dull tweezers. Hmm. Well, I paid for the clock with a post-dated check, and it's due today. Well, the whoop! Cashier at the bank will put it through for you. He always does. <laughs> Marie, be careful. Well, that's just it. I didn't want George to find out, so I wrote it on another bank. Oh, fine. Well, look, Liz, why don't you call up the jeweler and ask him to hold the check a few more days? Oh, I don't think he will. He doesn't like me. But I guess it's worth a try. Hello? Mr. Haskell, this is Mrs. Cooper. Oh, uh, yes, Mrs. Cooper. <laughs> Mr. Haskell, today is the day my check is due. Yes, Mrs. Cooper. Mr. Haskell? No, Mrs. Cooper. <laughs> no what? I am not holding that check a minute longer. Please? No. P pretty please? No. Pretty please with sugar on it? Try pretty, please, with money on it. <laughs> oh, isn't there any way I can appeal to you, Mr. Haskell? Oh, Mrs. Cooper, please, don't start to cry. I can't stand a woman who cries. Oh, Iris, he can't stand women crying. He'll open the floodgates. <laughs> Marie, you... Uh, Mr. Haskell, have pity on me. 
My husband doesn't know I'm out of money, and it was a present for him. Oh, please don't make me tell him. I'll do anything if you'll just hold that check for a few days longer. <sighs> Go on, dearie, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? This is Mrs. Haskell. Crying women don't bother me a bit. <laughs> what a sneaky thing to do. Well, here you are, Sam. She's dry again. <laughs> I'm taking that check down to the bank this afternoon, and there better be something there to cover it. There will be a little stamp marked insufficient funds. Well, if that happens, your husband will have a little wall marked no cuckoo clock. <laughs> you wouldn't take that clock back. I'm sorry, Mrs. Cooper, no ticky, no talky. <laughs> <laughs> but, Mr. Haskell... What is it, honey? Nothing. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, I'm dead. Come on, let's go. Where? We've got to get that clock out of George's office before Mr. Haskell does. Well, I don't know how to get Liz out of this spot, but I do know how to get you out of a spot the next time unexpected company drops in for supper. Just whip them up a wonderful jello dessert in jig time with the new quick setting method. Here's what you do dissolve your jello in one cup of hot water. Add one cup of ice cubes or crushed ice, filling the cup to the brim with water. Stir until the ice melts completely, then put in the refrigerator to chill firm. And in just about one hour, you have a beautiful finished jello dessert all ready to set on the table. It's a lifesaver for last minute company or busy weekends or for any time at all. And all six delicious Jell-O flavors make the high spot of any meal. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Bursting with fruit-rich goodness and shimmering with gay color. So look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and it's Jell-O for red letter desserts. J-E-L-L-O And now back to Lucille Ball in My Favorite Husband. <laughs> As we look in on the Coopers once again, Liz is speeding to George's office to make off with the cuckoo clock before Mr. Haskell, the jeweler, arrives to repossess it. Meanwhile, in his office, George Cooper is just getting ready to go out to lunch. I'll be back in about an hour, Miss Russell. I'm going to lunch. Oh, all right, Mr. Cooper. Uh, chew everything thoroughly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, by the way, that new cuckoo clock is running down. Uh, would you please wind it for me? You don't mean you're going to keep that thing. Certainly. Oh, but it's so corny. Look, Miss Russell, my wife gave me that clock for Christmas, and I happen to think it's wonderful. Do you understand? Perfectly. You think it's corny, too, but you're stuck with it. <laughs> exactly. Well, I'll wind it. Uh, thank you. I'll be back at one. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, I must have wound it too tight. Well, well, I'll just take it along with me. Maybe I can get it fixed on my lunch hour. George? Miss Russell? George? Oh, good, Iris. They must be out to lunch. What a break. I'll just grab the clock and leave before anybody gets... <gasps> Where is it? I don't see it anywhere. It was right on the wall yesterday. Iris! Oh! <laughs> you scared me. What? Mr. Haskell's already been here. Do you think so, girl? Of course. I was going to sneak in here and get the clock, and he sneaked in ahead of me. I've been out snucked. <laughs> well, what are you going to do now? I'll tell you what, I'm going down to Haskell's and give him a piece of my mind. Well, there's the shop. Now, we'll see him. Well, how do you like that, Iris? What? He's got George's cuckoo clock back in his window already. You were right, Liz. 
How do you do, ladies? Mark. Oh, Mrs. Cooper. <laughs> well, what do you have to say for yourself, you, you big Indian giver? What? You should be ashamed sneaking into my husband's office and taking that clock back. I took that clock back? See, Iris, he admits it. <laughs> no, look, Mrs. Cooper. I haven't even tried to cash your check yet. My wife left to take you to the bank not five minutes ago. <laughs> now, I've been busy all day. I haven't been out of the shop. <laughs> it's the truth. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Iris. <laughs> if it's the truth, then how did my clock get back in your window? I suppose it's a homing cuckoo. <laughs> That's not your clock, Mrs. Cooper. That's one just like it. <laughs> now, look, ladies, I'm not a well man. The Christmas season always takes a lot out of me. <laughs> I'd like my clock, please. Now, now, look at these hands of mine. You see how they're trembling? I have to repair five watches this afternoon. With these hands, I couldn't overhaul a sundial. <laughs> oh, come on, Liz. I'm coming, but I'll tell you one thing, Mr. Haskell. I'll never set foot in your store again. Well, thank you. That helps, but I'm still in bad shape. <laughs> Oh, he makes me so mad. Calm down, Liz. There's nothing you can do about it. Oh, yes, there is. What? I don't like the look on your face. I'm going to snitch my clock back. But that's stealing. It is not. It's my clock. But you haven't paid for it. I have to. He has my check. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> So he stole the clock from me, and I'm just getting back what's rightfully mine. He's the crook. No wonder his hands were shaking. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll tell you how I've got it planned. One of us will stay out here and keep watch, while the other one goes in and gets the clock. Okay. And for heaven's sake, Iris, don't drop it. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, I'll go... To... <laughs> oh, no, you don't. You go in and I'll stay out here. Well, I got a better plan. What is it this time? I'll go in and you go home? <laughs> no, I'll wait out here while you go in and divert his attention. By doing what? A strip tease? <laughs> no, he's shaky enough already. <laughs> now, just a minute. I'm kidding. Look, Iris. I'll do all the dirty work. I'll go in and get him to go to the back of the store for something. When he's back there, I'll whistle. And all you have to do is come in, take the clock, and leave. That's all. <laughs> it's the only way. Then he can't suspect me because I'll be in there all the time. Well, all right. But if I'd known we were going to pull a job, I'd have worn my bulletproof corset. <laughs> <laughs> Now, remember, Iris, come in as soon as I whistle. Good afternoon. Mrs. Cooper, what now? Now, don't worry, Mr. Haskell. This is not about the cuckoo clock. I'd like to look at some jewelry. No. If I make a big enough sale of you, I can go bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's not for me. It's for Mr. Atterbury. He wants to buy his wife a present. Oh. What does he want? Oh, uh, he wants, um... A watch. Oh, fine. Here are all my watches right here in this case. You don't have any in the back room? <laughs> no, no, they're all right here in this case. Oh. Where do you keep your diamonds? In a case in the back room. He'll take a diamond. <laughs> How many carrots? Carrots? <laughs> yeah, well, that's how we measure the size of diamonds. Now, how many carrots? Two bunches. <laughs> Please, Miss Cooper. How many carrots? One, two, three. Fifteen. What's the matter? I had a pain in my side. 
Yeah, but I thought I heard a door slam. Oh, no. No, it was my side. I have shingles. <laughs> oh. Well, I'll go get a diamond for you. Be right back. Okay. Whistle your chorus from Come to the Stable, Mabel. Huh? No, thanks. Well, I'll be running along now. Uh, goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. What about this diamond? Here I am, Lynn. It's over here. Good. Give me the clock. I'll hide it under my coat. Uh, here. Do you think we can sneak it back to George's office? Well, we can try. Can you see it under my coat? Yeah, uh, you look a little bulgy. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper. Oh, hello, Miss Russell. Uh, hello, Mrs. Atterbury. What brings you to downtown? Oh, nothing much. We just had some time on our stomachs. Hands. <laughs> Is Mr. Cooper in? No, he's not back from lunch yet. Oh, good. We'll wait for him in his office. Now, to get this clock on the wall before George... Ah! Iris, look! <laughs> There's a cuckoo clock on the wall. There were two of them. Oh, dear. I stole Mr. Haskell's clock. <gasps> What'll I do? Back to Haskell's? <laughs> Come on. We've got to unsnitch it. Uh -oh. <laughs> well, we're stuck with a hot cuckoo on our hands. <laughs> There's Haskell's. Now... Now, how are we going to get the clock back in, Iris? Wait a minute. Look through the windows, Liz. Huh? There's no one in there. He must be in the back of the store. Now's our chance. Okay, come on. Well, that's the whole story. Oh, here he comes. Well, I told you everything I know about it, officer. He's got a policeman with him. Let's make a run for it. Well, Mrs. Cooper. Mrs. Atterbury. Too late. Keep your coat buttoned. <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, the most dreadful thing has happened. There's been a robbery. No. <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's right, miss. It's a robbery, all right. I don't understand it. Neither do I. Why would anyone steal a cuckoo clock? <laughs> How do you know it was a cuckoo clock? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> What was that? What? I didn't hear anything. Well, I did. What do you think I am? You go... Huh? <laughs> oh, I heard something that time. Iris, do you have the hiccups again? Hiccups? Oh, yes! Yeah! Yes, I always hiccup like that. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! <laughs> I'm not so sure. Honestly, officer, would I lie to you? I heard two of them. How do you like that? I have them, too. Hold on. Hold on. Hold it! <laughs> Mrs. Cooper, I have a feeling you've got that clock hidden under your coat. So do I. Come here. You can't touch me without a search warrant. You're under arrest. No, no, wait. Wait, officer, wait. There must be some explanation for this. Oh, there is, Mr. Haskell. I thought you took George's clock, but I found out it was being fixed. Uh. I'll tell you what I'll do, Mrs. Cooper. I'll drop the charges if you just pay me for the clock and settle all this. All right. Oh. Do you mind if I write you another check? <laughs> My hands are starting to shake again. All right, write me a new one. Well, can I date it a little ahead? Oh, no. Now, this is the 13th. Date of the 20th. All right. Uh, there you are. Here's your check. Thank you. And here's your clock. No, 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 no. 
<laughs> Please, Mrs. Cooper, go away and leave me alone. All right, come on, Iris. Goodbye, officer. Goodbye. Well, Liz, I suppose you think you're pretty smart. Yeah. Oh, you're just as bad off as you were before. You only have a week to get the money. No, no, I've got plenty of time. Well, how do you figure? You dated the check January the 20th, didn't you? Sure, January the 20th, 1953. <laughs> <laughs> well, it takes Liz to come up with a surprise ending, same as Jello. And say, be sure to look in leading magazines for January for a full page of brand new Jello treats. Easy, easy, easy to make, and all delectably good to eat. You'll find sparkling strawberry jello party cake, gay jello clown faces, and crested apple fluff, a winner if ever there was one. Foamy whipped lime jello topped with sparkling plain lime jello and filled with tempting applesauce. It's pretty as a picture and tastes like a breath of spring, with that fruit rich tart lime flavor. So be sure to look it up in leading January magazines with a picture that'll make you hungry. All six delicious Jell-O flavors are bursting with wonderful true fruit goodness. Strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. Flavors so rich and refreshing, it reminds you of the orchard and the berry patch. Look for those big red letters on the box. They spell Jell-O, and it's Jell-O for red letter desserts. <laughs> You have been listening to My Favorite Husband, starring Lucille Ball with Richard Denning and based on characters created by Isabel Scott Rorick. Tonight's transcribed program was produced and directed by Jess Oppenheimer, who wrote the script with Madeline Pugh and Bob Carroll, Jr. Original music was composed by Marlon Skiles and conducted by Wilbur Hatch. The part of Iris Atterbury was played by B. Benaderet. Hans Conried played by Mr. Haskell. The part of Katie the Maid was played by Ruth Parrott. Be sure to watch for Lucille Ball as a would-be cosmetic dealer in her latest picture, The Fuller Brush Girl. Does coffee, coffee, coffee make you nag, nag, nag? It's the caffeine in coffee that really does it. The caffeine in coffee that turns an angel into a shrew. So if coffee, coffee, coffee makes you nag, nag, nag... Switch to Sanka Coffee, the regular or the instant. Sanka Coffee has 97% of the caffeine taken out. Sanka Coffee can't make you nervous or jittery. Sanka Coffee can't steal your sleep. So if coffee, coffee, coffee makes you nag, nag, nag... Switch to Sanka Coffee. Sanka Coffee. Sanka Coffee. Be sure to listen to Lucille Ball and My Favorite Husband again next week, presented by... Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. Oh, the big red letters stand for the Jell-O family. That's Jell-O. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O pudding. Yum, yum, yum. Jell-O tap. The yolk of pudding gets furry. The name Jell-O is a registered trademark of General Foods. Bob Lamont speaking. This is CBS, the star's address, the Columbia Broadcasting System.